Yulma, good evening. Dan Borsha with ABC News. Tonight we're broadcasting from the front of the ABC building in Dixon where smoke has prompted the fire alarms to go off like so many buildings across our capital. This appears to be coming the new normal and we woke up this morning with this thick smoke haze blanketing the city. Tonight a rise in the number of cases and a drop in interest rates. The coronavirus crisis escalates. You're my good evening. Dan Borsha with ABC News. Australians are being told to brace for drastic measures to control a coronavirus outbreak. Health authorities here in Canberra are asking anyone who had contact with the infected ADF member to self-quarantine and be tested for the virus. Dan Borsha reports. It's not being made public just who they met with or the size of those meetings. And here in Australia, there's a level of community anger around Indigenous disadvantage that's not been seen since the establishment of Canberra's tent embassy in the 1970s. Almost 50 years on, the ABC's Dan Borsha spoke to one of the families that's been there from the start. The Indigenous incarceration statistics nationally are shocking. Black lives matter! In the ACT, if you're Indigenous, you're 18.9 times more likely to end up in prison than anyone else. There are calls for a rethink of statues and monuments in Canberra that may hold negative connotations for some members of the community. Please join us, whether inside your home, on your balcony, at the end of the driveway or at the farm gate. Australians will today remember in their own ways those who served, lest we forget. And as Dan Borsha reports, it's amazing it survived at all. There's name here, but you can see the paint there. On a tiny side. memento that's had a big know. impact on a Canberra family. A2, that's his blood type. A New South Wales coroner has apologised for the despair and unsafe circumstances an Indigenous Canberra man was in leading up to his death in custody in 2018. Ngunnawal elders say a rock art site saved from the summer bushfires is crucial to maintaining their connection to country and to continue practising their culture. Took all the intensity out. Removing those accelerants saved this important Ngunnawal rock art site. A meeting place with stories of the cycles of the seasons, the animals of the region and who those people were. It's emotional, isn't it? Yeah, yes, very emotional. You can see the tears in my eyes. Dan Borsha reports from Canberra. This supercomputer is comparable to having 60,000 home computers working together to solve very complex problems. It takes more energy than it needed to run a small suburb and the storage, the volume of information, is akin to every single book that's been printed in every single language over the last 500 years. Reporter Dan Borsche is on the trail and he joins us now from Queanbeyan. So, Dan, just tell us what the mood's been like there among voters as we get close to polls closing. Yeah, Miriam, good afternoon. You get a sense that people who are coming out are doing it quite begrudgingly. They're making sure to ensure physical distance. Let's find out what the candidate has to say. Trevor Hicks is here. Uh, G'day, what do you make of it? Well, you know, it, I don't know where the rumour started, but Labor's picked up on it. Hello and welcome to this commemorative program to mark the 75th anniversary of the end of the Second World War. I'm Dan Borsha. And I'm Kumi Taguchi. On the 15th of August 1945, Japan's Emperor Hirohito announced the end of hostilities. Unlike the mass celebrations that marked that momentous occasion in 1945, surviving veterans are marking this year's commemoration in COVID-19 confinement. Commemorations today were smaller because of COVID restrictions, but no less poignant. Dan Borsha reports from Canberra. Now, more than 90 years later, there are renewed calls to remember and honour those involved in these first protests for sovereignty at Parliament House. And a warning, this report contains the images of Aboriginal people who have died. Jimmy Clements was better known as King Billy for his leadership role for the Wiradjuri people. But now over to Dan Borsha at the National Museum for our special coverage of ACT Votes 2020. Yuma, good evening, Nada. You join me here at one of Canberra's most iconic spots, 
Acton Peninsula, the home of the National Museum of Australia. Inside the museum's stunning entrance hall, final rehearsals are underway for tomorrow night's ABC election special. Less than 24 hours from now, the polls will be closed and the first results will be coming in. With just over 80% of the vote counted, at this stage there's been a 3.4% swing to the Greens. That looks likely to translate to four seats with another two possible. Shane Rattenbury is the Greens leader and was a Cabinet Minister in the last government and he joins me now. Thanks for your company. Does this effectively make you another opposition party? You and Dan, well we're very excited with this result. Out of a happy homecoming at the Tidbinbilla Nature Reserve for some cute critters who've been on a forced holiday of sorts in New South Wales. Tidbinbilla's resident platypi seemed keen to settle back in this week. Seven were rescued during summer when drought and bushfire threatened their survival. Yeah. Good to see them back.